So I've been using the Android 13 on the Pixel 6 Pro for the last couple of days now. I just want to make a video telling you whether or not it's worth downloading the update right away on the Pixel 6 Pro. So I haven't noticed a ton of new features. I might honestly glance over a lot of new things, but as an average user, I noticed a couple of different things. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about it. So one of the first few things I noticed was the new animation when you're turning on the device. So whether it be the power button, the fingerprint sensor, or lifting to wake, what it'll do is do like a little gradient starting at where you turn it on from, and then just go from off to on, which is pretty cool. It does the same thing when you're turning it off. So the only way to turn it off is by using the power button. So if you use the power button, it'll animate from on to off and gradiently smooth over to the power button, which I think is really cool and very neat. Most of the time, most phones just are on and off, don't have like a really cool animation. I know back in the day, there used to be pretty cool animations. I remember the droids would turn off like a TV, which was pretty cool, but this is a neat new animation that I really like. And overall, I did feel like the animations and the overall fluidity and smoothness of the phone itself with the 120 hertz display that the Pixel 6 Pro has, it felt very smooth when I updated the N13. It wasn't like major, but it, you definitely can feel a difference when you're scrolling around through the OS and you're opening up apps. So with that in mind, with performance, with the 12 gigabytes of RAM and the Google Tensor chip, the phone overall still runs pretty warm in my opinion, and it actually warms up pretty fast as well still. So I was having these similar issues with Android 12, so the OS didn't really improve it that much. Performance, like I said, based off the fluidity and smoothness, it does feel better when you're just doing one thing at a time. So if you're just browsing around, you know, checking your emails, texting, checking social media here, playing music every once in a while, you know, you're still gonna get a pretty good experience. But as soon as you start to do a little bit more, such as multitasking, usually my multitasking involves picture in picture, watching YouTube and browsing another app, Sometimes I'll split the screen and which, whichever one it is, whether it be splitting the screen or picture in picture, the phone will warm up after some time and it does get pretty hot in my opinion. Same thing with playing games. So if you're playing a game, if you set the settings up to pretty high settings, which I am a sucker for doing, I tend to do that all the time, it will definitely warm the phone up, which is expected, but it just warms up pretty fast and it gets pretty warm and to the point that it kind of feels a little bit uncomfortable. Also, if you're using the camera for a long time, if you're shooting a lot of photos and videos, you're definitely gonna feel the, the phone start to warm up and after some time, it'll start to say that because the phone's too warm, certain settings are disabled or it'll even affect the quality of the video you're taking or of the photo you're taking. Especially if you live in a place that's constantly warm or constantly hot. For me, summer's coming to an end very soon, so hopefully I won't have to deal with this issue anymore. But if you live in a place that's really warm, then you will notice a bit of a dip in performance when the phone gets hot. So the one time I just left my phone in my bag and I was just using it to listen to Bluetooth or use, listen to music with Bluetooth and I took the phone out and it was hot. When I was using it, I noticed that the display was down to 60 Hertz. I could tell because it wasn't smooth, it was and fluid there's a little bit of choppiness in the animation so the phone definitely struggles a little bit when you when it starts to get warm so there is a little bit of different performance so besides that though if you're able to control the environment that you're in and you're not in a high environment and just using it pretty normally like i said you'll get a pretty decent experience and the smoothness and the fluidity of the phone itself is pretty good and every once in a while i will encounter still a couple bugs here and there some of those are because i'm trying to multitask and using the developer mode so i'll be trying to split screen apps that aren't meant to be split screen or i'll be trying to use free form which it's not as good as Samsung's and honestly, I won't even recommend it. So it ends up causing some kind of issue sometimes with some of the apps. So besides that, I still think the performance didn't really make it worse. I wouldn't say definitely improved it a lot, but it stayed about the same, if not just a little bit better. So now I'll talk about some of the other features I noticed when using Android 13. So number one being the new media player widget that shows up on your lock screen and in your quick settings. So it'll use the album cover or the thumbnail of whatever you're listening to. So whether it be on YouTube or another streaming app such as Apple Music. I did notice though that with Apple Music, there is a bit of a delay whenever you're pressing pause or play so i want to say it's more because it was the third party than it is a first party because when i'm using like youtube music or youtube itself it is pretty responsive with pausing and playing also shows a new animation to show you the progress of when something is playing looks pretty interesting to me but one thing i want to know is in the quick settings i'm a little disappointed that they chose to make that one of the first thing that shows up at the bottom and not the brightness slider why do you have to keep the brightness slider so high? Just bring it down low. You even lower down the quick settings or the settings toggle and the power button on the quick settings as well. So I really wish they would have moved the brightness slider down below or lower because for me, it's not very one-handed friendly, especially on the Pixel 6 Pro because it's a pretty big display. So all other phones have the brightness slider pretty low, except for the Pixel Launcher for some reason. 
it's kind of annoying. The other thing I noticed too is of a wallpaper style is you have a couple more options in choosing your color palettes when you're selecting colors to go based off your wallpaper. So before you only had four, now you have 16, whether you're choosing wallpaper colors or basic colors. And the themed icons, I swear it said beta last Android version and it still says beta now. And when I used it, I noticed that it still doesn't completely turn every single app into the aesthetic looking color matching wallpaper color styles. So I really wish it did all apps. It still doesn't do all apps. So at this point, I'm not gonna use it because my home screen uses a variation of Google apps and it also uses a variation of like third party apps. So that's a little bit disappointing as well. I also forgot to mention that in the quick settings, they added a little toggle that allows you to see which apps are running in the background. So if you wanna save on battery, just go on there, check which apps are running in the background and stop them. It says it might affect the functionality of the app. So just keep that in mind too. And one of the big things that I also read about that they added app language support so you can change the language of your app. Only thing is that when I checked in the settings, it only has a small selection of apps that you can change. And most of them are only Google. It does seem a little bit limited right now, but hopefully in the future, it does seem to increase on in which apps it'll compatibly work with and potentially increase the number of apps that you can use. I also noticed the clipboard works a little bit differently. So now it looks like a screenshot. So whenever you copy something, it'll show up at the bottom like a screenshot. And you can also edit that copy. So if you edit it, it'll save a copy of the original and also save a copy of the new one that you made. So that's pretty cool. So in case you didn't mean to make the edit or you wanna keep both, you can you know keep both and paste them whatever you want using the clipboard. And last thing I noticed is that when you install a new app, it'll now ask you if you want to allow it to send you notifications. Similar to how if you visit a website on Chrome, it'll ask if you wanna receive notifications from this website. Usually I say no, so I'm probably gonna say no on the app as well now, unless of course I need that app to send me notifications. But besides that, that's pretty much everything I noticed. So I am an average user and I might have glanced over and missed a bunch of new stuff, but that's the main things that popped out at me and that I read about and heard about. So honestly, this update felt pretty minor, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Good because, you know, it just adds a little bit of stability. It doesn't bring new bugs either, but a bad thing because I'm left wanting more. I was left wanting a lot of new customization, which I probably shouldn't have expected or really should have thought of, but like I wish it was a little bit more like Samsung's customization. So being able to change the icons, like change them to a whole third party, of course you can install a third party launcher, but be able to add your own icons or take the label off the icons, being able to freely move apps everywhere and get rid of stuff on your home screen. So still the little on the glance widget still won't allow you to place apps next to it. Uh, the search bar is still stuck where it's at. I wish they added the search bar and the Google Discover page similar to how OnePlus has it. I wish they would have added that stack widget that Samsung and iOS have. It allows me to free up some of the space on my home screen so I don't have a ton of different home screens and can stack widgets together. I also really wish the app drawer was slightly improved so being able to make folders in here to organize it better and also being able to delete apps straight from the app drawer would be nice. And the last thing I was hoping that they would improve a little bit on was the battery settings. I just wish it showed you either the last time you fully charged and how it went from there or the last couple of days just because it doesn't really tell me much from the past 24 hours. Yeah, it tells me which apps I use the most and which apps used up the battery the most, but I, what I really wanna know is my screen on time and how it's been in the past couple of days. So talking about that battery, it really hasn't improved it that much. If anything, I still get about the same battery life I was getting with Android 12, maybe slightly improved. It's still not that great for me. So. I can get a whole day out of this if I'm not using the phone heavily or using it very lightly. So some days I'll end with like six to 5% by like 10 o'clock. So it's really pushing it to get a whole, not even a whole day, get about a day's worth of battery life. But most of the time I'll end up have to charge around like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. and charging isn't fast. So it takes about an hour and 30 minutes still with that, I think it's like 20 or 30 watts fast charging that they claim. It's pretty slow and you still have reverse wireless charging and adaptive charging. Adaptive charging still isn't that great, especially on my Samsung wireless, wireless charger trio. So I think you have to use an actual plugged in charger or like a pixel stand because with my wireless charger, it sucks. I woke, I'll wake up and it's still like at 40%, 70%, depending on when I plugged it in. So that the charging still needs improved in my opinion, depending on the charger that you're using. So at the end of the day, should you go out and update the Android 13 on the Pixel 6 Pro? Honestly, why not? Everything bad I talked about was stuff I already experienced on Android 12 with the Pixel 6 Pro. So if anything, Android 13 didn't make anything worse. It just kept it the same and just added a little bit of fluidity and smoothness to the whole phone experience and a couple new features. So. 
And the thing itself was pretty minor, which like I said before, was a good thing and potentially a bad thing as well because I was left wanting more. So it definitely did not revolutionize Android and it definitely did not revolutionize the Pixel 6 Pro itself. So as far as like recommending the phone, I would still say no for a couple of reasons. One, because Pixel 7 is like right around the corner and also the Google Tensor chip hopefully is better improved on that new generation because it just runs pretty warm in my opinion. Unless you can find this at a very good deal and I'm talking like 500 or less than maybe but besides that that's been it let me know what your thoughts on are on the android 13 update and on the pixel 6 pro itself right now so yeah that's been it hope you guys enjoyed and peace